There's violin, viola, violoncello, and bass. The cello is shortened to cello. And actually, I love to name my cello when I first meet it. So my cello's name is Bert. And to, together, Bert and I are gonna tell you the parts of the cello so that when we start to learn the cello and play the cello, when we refer to a part, we know what it is. start at the top. This is the scroll. It's a beautiful piece at the top of the cello. And in the scroll are four pegs. These are the large tuning pegs and they do the big tuning of the strings. This, the back side, is called the neck. On top of the neck, you can see this black piece. So you've got the brown neck and then the black piece that goes all the way down is called the fingerboard. At the very top of the fingerboard, there's a little piece of black wood that is called the nut. And the strings lay over the nut, which keeps them raised above this fingerboard. And they go all the way down and are hooked into this piece, which is called the tailpiece. These little knobs on the tailpiece are called fine tuners. They do exactly that tune the string finely. This here is called the bridge. The strings lay over the bridge and little fun fact about the bridge, it is not attached to the cello. So when you're carrying around the cello in your bag, be really careful of this piece because it can pop off. We would not want that. Poor bird, he'd be very sad if he lost his bridge. Let's go to the bottom of the cello. This is called the end pin. So I'm gonna release the end pin by unscrewing the screw and pulling out the pin. We're gonna learn how to set that up later. This here on the side, these are the sides or the ribs of the cello. So that your cello has ribs just like you. And the back of the cello. So that's Bert and I. Together, we're going to make some music. This is the cello bow. The parts of the cello bow, this is the stick, the tip, this piece with the little eye is called the frog, the pin, the horsehair, and the silver. That is the cello bow. Before I show you the bow hold, I'm going to remind you of the frog. The frog is kind of oddly shaped, but there's this little piece right here where the frog meets the stick that's very important. This is where our thumb is going to go. This, it, these are my fingers and my thumb. Thumb. First finger, middle finger, who I'm going to lovingly name Long John Silver. Third finger and pinky. They all are part of the bow hole. The first thing we're gonna do is place our friend Long John Silver on the silver. Then third finger is gonna kinda of come near the eye on the frog and pinky right on top near the pin. First finger is going to kind of curve a little bit like I'm pouring something out of a jar. And then I'm going to let my thumb come right on that place where I just described where this frog meets the stick. <laughs> place your bow hold, support it on your palm. And then we have a really fun song to sing to the 
theme of Twinkle. And it goes like this. Up like a rocket, down like the rain, back and forth like a choo-choo train, round and round like the great big sun, land on your palm, check your pinky and your curved thumb. Up like a rocket, down like the rain, back and forth like a choo-choo train. To place the cello, you're going to have to ask a helper. I'm the helper, and Una is the student. A few things that we need before we place the cello. We need a cello strap and a chair. So the chair should be like a dining room chair that has no arms and it should be not very high off the ground. So a, a lower dining room chair would, would work really well. So now Una's gonna move into the chair, in front of the chair, and she's going to place her feet chair width. These are now her cello feet. Cello feet have to be firmly placed into the floor. Now, she's going to sit straight down on the chair in the middle of the chair. Now, if I asked Una right now to stand up without moving her cello feet, do you think she can do it? <gasps> she did! Now, this is something I think is a good thing to practice. Keeping your cello feet on the floor and being able to stand up and sit down. Now, I'm going to place the cello onto Una so she can learn how to hold it. I need to look at the C peg. The C peg is going to help guide me to place the cello. The C peg is going to go behind her left ear. So you place the C peg behind your left ear, and then I'm going to release the end pin into the cello strap. The cello strap, if it's not Right where the end pin landed, you may need to adjust the strap to match where your C peg lands behind your ear. But ultimately, you want to have this strap always be the same length, so every time you take your cello out and get it into position, it goes into the strap. This way you don't have to remember. Now, we're just going to give the cello a big hug. Notice that the cello is placed right, the points of the cello on the side are right above her kneecaps, and she's able to hug the cello and feel pretty comfortable. Now, if I ask her to open her arms, the cello is balanced on her body. So now, if I asked her to stand up, she would push the cello forward, and she could stand up with ease. Right, excellent. How about sitting back down? And we'll place that cello right behind your ear. And now bring your arms in to hug it again. Excellent. So, one of the things you have to remember is your back has to be nice and tall, your cello feet always planted into the ground because we don't want that cello to push you over. It's a big instrument and it could become a little bully. We don't want it to do that. So this is what you're going to practice. After we place our cello in position, we have to learn how to take a bow, especially after we play our first song. So I have an easy eight steps to taking a bow. And it goes like this. One, push your cello forward. Two, stand up. Three, match your cello feet. Four, take your bow. Five, stand up. Six, place your cello feet. Seven, sit down. Eight, bring the cello back. That's how we take a bow. Should we practice that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's the cello bow. to learn the names of the cello strings. But before we do that, we need to learn how to pluck the cello strings. So we're going to take Mr. Thumb, we're going to place him on the side of the fingerboard. 
and take Mr. Pointer Finger and pluck the strings like so. So the name of the strings are A, D, G, C. I know it can be hard to remember the names of the strings, so I have a great song we can learn to help us learn the names of the strings. And it goes like this. Ants, 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 digging in the dirt, 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 going underground, ground, ground, carrying their chillos, chillos, chillos. Wasn't that fun? Should we do it again? Ants, 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 digging in the dirt. that start with the letter C, and you can play this song many, many times while you practice and learn the names of the strings. Have fun! Left hand technique. Imagine your left hand that at the end of each one of your fingers is a little suction cup. Now make the, the letter C with your hand. And take that C and just let those suction cups sink into your string. Now we can open the hand up and we can plop onto the string. So we can do C, suction cup on, open, and catapult on. So you might want to practice that a few times. Oh, you're asking where my thumb should be? Yeah, your thumb should be between your second and your third finger behind the fingerboard. Good question. So now a fun little thing we can do is we can make sure our suction cups are on, that our elbow is straight with our pinky. See that straight line? And we can do what's called our little ski jump. So we're going to guide our hand all the way down the string and then suction cup back on. Jump. Circle land. Jump. Circle land. This is a great thing to practice so that you get used to feeling the weight of your arm into the string onto the fingerboard. And that's left hand technique. Placing the bow on the string. Before we place the bow on the string, we have to know where to place the bow on the strings. I like to think of the space between the fingerboard and the bridge like a bowling alley. Closest to the fingerboard is bowling lane number one. Then there's bowling lane number two. The middle is bowling lane number three, four, five, and six is closest to the bridge. When I place my bow on the string, I want to place it on the D string in bowling lane three. Notice I'm placing it on this with this little blue strip. So I'm going to rock between all the strings. If you recall from our ant song, this is A, D, G, and C. Let's do that again. Rock over the strings. A, D, G, and C. One other thing I'd like to point out, when I'm on the A string, my elbow is high. When I'm on the D string, it's in sort of in the middle. G, it starts to lower. And C, it's closest to my leg. So you can practice rocking on the strings with your bow while maintaining your beautiful bow hold. Have fun practicing. Now we're ready to start making some beautiful sounds on the cello. We are gonna start with a bowing pattern I call Mississippi Stop Stop. Notice my left hand is in regular playing ready position. 
Remember that plop? We plop, and then we just hover the fingers over the string. With our right hand, our bow, we are going to do a little Mississippi stop stop with our bow, and it's going to look like this. So I'm going between this line and this line from Mississippi. Mississippi.